Ok, today we have some bad news for Trekkies. Vulcan, the home planet of Mr. Spock right here, might no longer exist. And not because it was destroyed, like in the 2009 version of Star Trek, where a Romulan villain named Nero creates an artificial black hole, destroying Vulcan once and for all, but instead it seems to not exist for scientific reasons. And so, how wonderful person, I mean, live long and prosper, wonderful person. Today we're going to discuss Vulcan, the real Vulcan, talk a little bit more about the science behind this, and talk about why it's no longer there. And here I think we have to start with this. This is a system known as 40 Eridani. It's a triple star system approximately 16 light years away from planet Earth, and it's a somewhat exciting system for different reasons. And it just so happens that according to the Star Trek canon, 40 Eridani A, the main star here, possesses a planet named Vulcan. And this is something that was hinted in the TV show many times. But the first appearance was in this particular episode back in 1967. This was the first episode of season 2. And so back then Vulcan was described as a really hot planet with a relatively thin atmosphere but also really high gravity, roughly around 1.4 times higher than planet Earth, and it was at a distance of 16 light years from the solar system. And though in Star Trek it's never really explicitly called 40 Eridani, as in the actual name never comes up, just based on the distance alone, this is the only star system that matches. And it's technically later confirmed in various additional books and even by the producers themselves. And so in other words, this is a real star system. And actually a star system that you can see with the naked eye because it is pretty bright. Here the main star is what's known as a K-type, somewhat similar to our sun, but just a little bit less massive and also a little bit cooler. But it also possesses two partners. One of them, at a distance of 400 astronomical units, is a very typical red dwarf, or basically an M-type star, although in this case it's also referred to as the flare star. And that's because these types of stars produce a lot of powerful X-ray flares. And as we know from a lot of other star systems, these types of flares can easily strip atmosphere from pretty much most planets really quickly. But then it also has a partner that's a white dwarf, and millions of years ago this used to be the main star. It was much more massive before, until one day it formed a planetary nebula, expelled a lot of mass from the system, and basically became this white dwarf. Interestingly enough, this is the first white dwarf we've ever discovered. It was discovered back in 1910, and it was very strange because it was extremely white. And it actually took many decades to finally figure out what this was. And so even though this is not the closest white dwarf to us, it's technically one of the few white dwarfs out there that you could easily see with a telescope, and more importantly, it's the brightest white dwarf in the night skies, despite other ones being a little bit closer. And for example Sirius B, which is much closer, is impossible to see because it's too close to the partner star. But here the distance is about 40 astronomical units away from the partner, so it's much easier to tell them apart. But this also means that it's really only the main star, 40 Eridani A, that's technically exciting for any kind of a planetary discovery. And for this particular star, if it does have some kind of a habitable planet, it would most likely be orbiting every 220 Earth days. But no such planet seems to exist according to most recent studies. Or basically, there seems to be no habitable planet based on most recent observations. However, something was discovered in 2018. You can read about this in the study you can find in the description, but in essence by using the method known as the radial velocity method, or basically the method where we kind of look for the star to wobble because something is in orbit around it, the scientists discovered that this star seems to change every 42 days. Or basically it seemed to contain a somewhat predictable 40 day period, implying that maybe there was something in orbit and that something was kind of massive. Not like Jupiter massive, but more like eight and a half masses of planet Earth massive, suggesting some kind of a hot super Earth or maybe mini Neptune. And if this was some kind of a super Earth, it would very likely have higher gravity, possibly up to 1.5 times higher than planet Earth, and would obviously be somewhat hot. And surprisingly, this was almost a direct description for planet Vulcan from Star Trek. And so back in 2018, this was actually kind of interesting, mostly for trackies because maybe this was the scientific information that Vulcan actually really exists, obviously in terms of the planet, not the aliens. Although naturally here it would be way more extreme and extremely unlikely to possess any conditions for organic life. And so because of these radial velocity transitions, 
and because I guess this was kind of unusual, because it matched the planet from Star Trek, a lot of scientists try to see if this is really there, or if there's something else going on here, and we're just basically being silly, and this is all just wishful thinking. And basically it took approximately 5 years to start discovering what's possibly happening here. With this paper, the one that was just released a few weeks ago, basically presenting the final conclusion, the death of Vulcan. And in a nutshell, it once again focuses on a very similar technique involving transit velocity. Although here the researchers used a new NASA instrument on top of the Kitt Peak Observatory in Arizona that contains a new instrument able to conduct extremely accurate transit velocity calculations by once again using the Doppler effects. Or just to rephrase this, it uses the red shifts and the blue shifts of the starlight to try to find any kind of a periodicity that could be caused by a hidden object such as a planet. And once again they did discover something going on here. But the results were a little bit different, way more unpredictable with the period changing between 38 and 45 days. And that by itself was somewhat unusual because it basically suggested that this could not be an orbiting planet. And this was probably something caused by the rotation of the star itself. As a matter of fact, because we know stars rotate and usually have a relatively constant rotation period, we can usually determine this by observing certain features on the surface of a star, for example, some kind of a sunspot. And so here, by revealing individual differences in several different wavelengths, they basically realized that all of this is probably caused by some kind of a flicker on the surface of the star. Something that coincides with the 42-day rotation and something that's probably caused by various layers inside the star. So possibly just the result of convection under the surface. And that's because normally, if this was a planet, the periods would be a lot more constant and a lot more predictable, producing a very different observation. And so basically here what we're observing is extremely likely stellar activity and not a planet, not Vulcan. Which implies that the planet is technically not there. Or if you want to be tracky about it, uh, I guess it was destroyed after all by that evil Nero who destroyed the planet with an artificial black hole. But in terms of science, this is actually kind of important because these new methods established extreme accuracy. Which means that these methods can now be used to actually find planets around other star systems or confirm the existence of additional planets that the researchers were previously not so certain about. For example, the nearby system of Proxima b potentially contains additional planets, and so this new method could definitely confirm or disprove their existence. And so these new techniques for radial velocity method are super important. But I guess it still doesn't change the fact that one of the most iconic science fiction planets out there, Planet Vulcan, seems to be fictional after all. Even though the previous paper kind of gave us just a little bit of hope. Ok, but maybe some of these other ones are real. So what's next on the list? Oh, how about Krypton? Maybe that's real. But anyway, at least for now, that's basically all I wanted to mention. Unfortunately, there is no planet Vulcan orbiting Eridani A. But once something else is discovered around the star system, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, live long and prosper, even though technically your planet no longer exists. Uh, yeah. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.